So I was looking through past videos of mine to see what I had and hadn't covered, and I realised that I hadn't talked about comprehensions yet, which is really weird because I would have thought I would have done that by now, but here we are, we're doing it. Uh, comprehensions are a very cool thing in Python, a little bit of syntactic sugar, um, and they allow you to create lists, tuples to an extent, sets, dictionaries, and generators very easily, and it's a one-line syntax, but you can you know, spread it across multiple lines as well. Tuples, the syntax is a bit different. You have to do a generator comprehension first and then convert it into a tuple, uh, but we'll get into why that is in a second. So the general rules are the same. Well, uh, apart from dictionary comprehension, the rules are generally the same, uh, where you have your list here. So if, if you say evens, for example, we'll just have a really basic example. Uh, for every number, 1 to 100, we populate a list with even numbers and we have our you know list uh, brackets there and we can do i for i in range uh, say you know 100 if i modulo to w equals zero and this is the standard even check uh, you know if uh, you divide it by two and there's no remainder it's an even number uh, so that's why we're doing that but as you can see this is you know our one line setup for those of you that don't quite follow what's going on Essentially, the order of operations is for i in range 100, if i double equals 2, insert i into list. So it's sort of like if we had, say, evens equals an empty list, we have for i in range 100, uh, if i uh, modulo 2 equals 0, then we'd have evens.append uh, and then the i. Except this uh, list comprehension up here is a lot quicker because we're not calling append every single time. And calling append is slow. One, because just appending to a list is slower than normal anyway. And two, because it's a function call. And function calls in Python are notoriously not very quick. So being able to uh, you know, get away with not doing those is where we get the additional speed ups from this. So to just prove it works, if we do pi.py, we don't print anything. Uh, I seem to always do that. I don't know why, and I'm always printing. I'm always doing event, which is strange. But you can see uh, you have a list of zero, two, four, six, eight, etc., etc., up until ninety-four, ninety-six, and ninety-eight. The exact same rules apply for sets, so we can just uh, replace our square brackets with curly brackets. And because in Python a set notation is determined by if you have curly brackets and then don't explicitly create a dictionary. Uh, then you create a set, unless it's an empty set of square brackets like uh, this, in which case that would be classed as a dictionary, but this would be classed as a set. Um, so it's able to infer that you want to create a set and it does set comprehension. In this instance, the set is actually created in order uh, because of, of you know just the way it's been compiled. Um, I believe it's always in order if you do it like this, but don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. That might be a new thing. I know in Python 3.8 they updated orderings of things, but I'm not sure if that was limited to dictionary. So do let me know if you know uh, uh, whether that could return something unordered, but as far as I've tested, it always returns something ordered. Uh, now the reason we can't do tuple comprehension straight up, and we'll come to dictionary comprehension a bit later, uh, is, is uh, so if you have brackets like this, if you watch my previous video on, I forget exactly what the topic was already, it's been a while since I recorded anything, um, but this uh, generates a, uh, a generator rather than a tuple. So if you were to print this, we can see it's a generator object, and then we would actually, you know, if we just do uh, next uh, evens like that, we can see we get the zero. And then if we print, uh, let me, I think it might have actually just been on generators the last video completely. Uh, and then you know we have zero two, so it works exactly like a generator. But this is why you can't do it with tuples because tuples uh, uh, or tuple comprehension, quote unquote, like this creates generators. What you need to do instead is you need to actually wrap this in another set of brackets and then have a trailing comma. So in Python, uh, for those of you that don't know, that would register as just an int. The brackets kind of get removed during compilation, but if you do that it's a tuple because you're now saying that there could be multiple elements there, um, but in this case there's only one. So you're kind of providing an element break here, which is the same thing you're doing here. So you're now saying, oh, this is a tuple, not just something to ignore, uh, and you actually need to star here. So in this case, you'd be unpacking your generator into a tuple. You could do it as a tuple, um, 
inbuilt method as well, but it's slower to do it like that. So we don't do that. Uh, we don't like slowness here. Even even though we use Python, we try and find ways to make it as quick as possible. It's a fun challenge sometimes. A dictionary comprehension works a bit differently, so I'm actually going to remove everything here. I'm going to bring up my notes on the other screen. Uh, yeah, a reasonable size, there we go. And we're actually going to create two lists. So I was kind of thinking of the best way to demonstrate this, and I think I've got it, hopefully. Uh, so we have a series of numbers, we'll just have a list, one, two, three, four, five, and then a series of words, uh, one, uh, two, three, four, and then five, like that. And essentially what we want to do is create a dictionary that maps a number to a word. So we want to map one to one, two to two, etc., etc. So what we can do is we can create, you know, the same syntax we have with sets, except we do nw for nw in zip, whoops, it is, is uh, zip numbers words. So zip numbers words returns kind of a, a generator of tuples. So each entry will look something like this, for example, well, actually we'll, we'll do it like this. So each entry will do something like this. We then unpack uh, that tuple here into separate n and w variables. So n will be set as one and w will be set as the word one. And then we use, you know, the standard syntax for a dictionary to actually create a dictionary entry where n is the key and w is the value. And if we do that, uh, I don't didn't print it again. <laughs> uh, there we go. So we have one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. It's perfectly mapped. Uh, and everything. I will actually show off a slightly different example for people that might not have quite realized what was going on. So if you go back to our evens again, actually, yeah, we can go back to the evens again. Uh, so we can do D and then say I, and then if we want to map it to the square of that, so we could do I to the power of two, for I in range 100, and then we can also provide if I modulo 2 w equals 0. So here we're doing the same thing as we did with the, like the list generation and that. So we uh, so for i in range 100, if i is even, essentially, we then set i as the key and the square of i as the value. And I'm going to remember to print it this time. Oh my god, I actually did it. And then the terminal does that, okay. But as you can see, we have so 0, 0, 2, 4, 4, 16, 6, 36. So we have our you know if condition here, we have our loop here, and we have our key value mapping up here. So in a sense, it's not actually too much different from list or set comprehension or something like that. You just need to actually use the dictionary syntax for it to register as a dictionary. That's basically everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Generators are not too complicated to explain. They're Logically speaking, they're a bit weird to understand sometimes because everything's kind of in a different order. And if you've got a particularly complex generator, or not a generator, a comprehension statement, it can be difficult to piece together sometimes. The Warros operator does really help with it if you're in Python 3.8 onwards. So don't be scared to use the Warros operator with it because some things are kind of impossible to do in comprehension statements without the usage of um, the of the Walrus operator. So make sure to keep that in mind if you are working in Python 3.8 or above. If you like the video, then consider hitting the like button to let me know and maybe the subscribe button too if you really enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments or you wanna see me do anything in particular, then make sure to leave a comment down below. I'm always open for feedback and I'm always willing to answer questions, so make sure to leave them down there if you have anything to say. If you want to support this channel monetarily, if you really enjoy the content and want to go a bit further, you can either hit the join button to become a member or scroll a little bit further into the description to find the Patreon link. One pound a month you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you next time where we talk about asynchronous socket implementations. Hopefully, I was going to do that today, but I was having a bit of trouble getting it to work properly. So I'm going to try and come up with a better implementation. And hopefully that'll be out sometime around Friday, maybe if not, you know, the weekend. Uh, so I will see you for that.